meinst du, was sind die Gründe für ähm, mangelnde Integration der Einwanderer? Ich würde persönlich sagen, aus eigener Erfahrung, dass sie dass die zu wenig Unterstützung bekommen. Sie kommen in unser Land und anstatt ihnen eine Perspektive zu bieten und sie an die Hand zu nehmen und zu sagen, so läuft es hier in unserem Land, bitte kümmert euch um den Job. Wir helfen euch natürlich auch persönlich dabei, lernt die Sprache, weil so könnt ihr euch am besten integrieren. Anstatt das zu tun, werden sie in einigen Fällen zumindest in eine Art Ghetto gesteckt, wo sie alle aufeinander leben, die einheimische Sprache sprechen und so keine neuen Kontakte knüpfen. Motivation und zu welchen Ländern willst du reisen? Ähm, definitiv Schweden, genauer gesagt äh, Stockholm, weil äh, letzte Zeit äh, viele ähm, Flüchtlinge, Migranten dort äh, geflüchtet sind und daher äh, möchte ich gerne, äh, wo es auch aktuell ist, das Thema äh, Stockholm und das Thema in sich mehr unter die Lupe nehmen. Dankeschön. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Uh, Look, we discuss. Um, I think it really depends on the context and the yeah the social uh, medias that you're from. Um, for example, I spent one year in Berlin for an Erasmus, but ah, really? I come from a, a background with enough money to study and to learn. Uh, German when I was in France and then practice it in Germany so it was fast for me to oh, okay. to um, fabulous and, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. to make it better to make my language better it was fast and so yeah maybe one or two years was can be enough for someone like me but maybe when you are from a family that is a bit more poor or doesn't have the time to uh, go on long studies or language studies you need more time so I think it's, it's uh, yeah the problem of how the country uh, takes charge of the people who come in like uh, there is is there enough money to give to people like that that go to school and some things like that okay it's a political issue because like uh, for example in France in Paris you have the center of Paris Paris itself and the suburbs that are near to all the runways. Yeah, okay. All the poor people are in this area, the people that come from immigration and from other parts of the world, they are forced to live all in the same area that are not, um, how do you say, uh, not privileged area. Like, uh, they don't have an access to some things like when you have the money to live. In, in, in Paris. Okay, yeah, nice. So that's, yeah. yeah, that's a political issue, I think. Yeah. So I don't have a, a miracle solution, but uh, yeah, I think to have a better interaction and connection within the different community and culture is one of the key uh, yeah. solutions to the problem because uh, even more in like. Uh, different uh, political opinion nobody talk to each other like you, like you left side you don't talk to the guys are um, right side uh, okay. political. it's the same thing with communities like if you don't know these people that are too far away from your standards of living and you cannot talk to them or you don't do the step and that's the first uh, point step of the problem or, yeah, so, okay, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, maybe more associations or things like that to yeah, create a, a mix within yeah, okay. these communities. But I think um, it's not easy to welcome a lot of people in a country that is, is on low, is on function system, yeah. economy and, and so on. But it's a bit uh, tribal what I'm going to say, but today it's... Uh, 
human problem, but of human rights. Like there is people they cannot live in their country anymore, and they're going to die in the sea if the international community doesn't do anything. So it's like even not a question to say uh, it, it's that normal or not to welcome them. Yes, normal. Mm. It's human to welcome them. I think. Okay. Ah, nice. Okay. I think uh, that's more like an individual issue. Like you have to to continue yourself to learn it and speak to people. For example, in Paris, I can find a partnership with a, a girl or guy who speaks German and see uh, each other to no. improve my uh, German. When I in Paris, I think yeah, there is some options. You just okay. have to find it, even if you don't live in the country. Yeah. No, okay. Yeah. That's it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice. And uh, Me too. good luck, yeah? <laughs> bye bye. Thanks. Sure. So it looks like a wide set of questions, and I'm going to try to answer each of them yeah, one okay. by one, right? So, as I understand, you're saying to me that Germany uh, welcomes people from all over the world uh, to come and live in Germany. Um, I know that I felt very welcome when I went there. I was dating someone from Germany and I had a really good time. In Munich, when I went there, um, I also went up to Münster and uh, to some other cities in the north and the south, and I really enjoyed that. Um, but I think your question's more towards geared towards uh, certain people coming in, uh, not perhaps integrating. Mm. Uh, let's start with you know movement of, of of people around the world because we live in a globalized world. This is going to become more and more common, right? So people will move from one country to another. For example, French people come to Canada and will typically go both in the French and the English-speaking part. And they're forced to learn English because they want to learn English. Um, some will come to the French-speaking part because they want to learn French. And so they're forced to learn French because they only are surrounded by people that speak that language. So there's two points here. The first one is <clears throat> the push and pull factor. If your factor for going to a country is pull factor, which means you're pulled to that country because of their culture, because of the language, you're going to want to learn the language and the culture, right? So if you're coming to Canada and you like Drake, right? Yeah. <laughs> or you like Degrassi, or you like hockey, or you like the mountains, You're going to want to come to Canada and you're going to want to be part of the culture, mm. right? Yeah. So that's the pull factor. If you're coming because of a push factor, which is you're not happy with the country that you're in, and you're coming to Canada, I can only speak to Canada, right? Because I live in Canada. But you come to Canada because of that. At that point, you're sort of thinking, oh man, I'm just trying to run away from where I was, right? But people don't live in push only or pull only. They live in a bit of both. And it's up to a lot of us with with the way that we live our lives, um, our governments as well, and just people in general, to put all these things together. So, for example, if the government helps you by allowing you to learn the language with schools, by helping you integrate um, with the community, you know, and also the community comes together and helps you integrate, you're going to do it much quicker. Also, if you have the pull factor you know, more of the pull factor, you're going to do it much, much quicker, right? And so in Canada, we want to look at the positive side. And this is how a lot of people that have come to Canada have integrated. Another positive thing is, well, I think the difference between say, Canada and Germany starts here, is that Canada chooses people based on a point system. If you've got language, if you've got um, school, um, higher education, if you've got money, you're welcome to Canada. Mm. Right? Yeah. Because you'll integrate more easily, you'll pay taxes, and your life's going to be much better because you'll become part of Canada this way. Um, I think the biggest difference between, say, Germany and Canada starts here. Um, while Germany sold a lot of guns to a lot of, uh, and so did Sweden, where we are right now, to a lot of these countries, uh, I think sometimes the governments feel bad, that, or, or the people feel bad, uh, and so they're, they feel guilty, and you want to bring the people in. But typically, I find most Germans are quite welcoming, whether it's through Christian guilt or whatever it is you want to call it. Most people are quite welcoming, right? Um, if the people that are coming in are also happy to be part of it, 
then you'll have successes. For example, my ex-girlfriend who lives in Münster, she went and taught two people, two Syrian refugees. Mm. She spent a lot of time with them and taught them. And I would speak on the phone with her. Und wenn ich habe mit mit sie oder mit ihr mit ihr, mit ihr äh, gesprochen, äh, ich habe gehört, dass die Syrianer Syri 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 mm. äh, haben äh, deinen äh, oder their um, Deutsch verbessern. Uh, ich auch. Yeah. Right? So I've also learned in that way. And so I think it really depends on the people and the motivation behind them. And, and I hope that that answers the question. Um, yeah, nice. okay. yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's how I would say. So, so. you know, push-pull factor and, and what they're doing. Um, one more thing I just want to add is Germany needs a lot of people. And so ghettos are formed. Let's take a look at your history, right? So when the Gastarbeiter program was first introduced in Germany, it allowed people from Spain, I think Italy, Turkey, yeah, and some other countries. I don't know which one of them stayed the longest, but I know lots of Turks stayed in, in, in Germany. Mm -hmm. Germany and Turkey also had a close relationship in the First and Second World Wars, just by the way, right? Yeah. And so let's take a look at it like that. Perhaps the Italians and the Spanish and the Greeks integrated better Maybe because of religion, I don't know, I can't speak to that. But perhaps the Turks went into a slightly different, you know, space and time, right? Um, but if you have to do a high paying job, or if you have to do a job that's a professional job, whether you're a first generation, second generation Turk, or second generation German, you have the same opportunity in Germany. Mm, okay. But if you're going to do a, a job that doesn't require you to speak English, you could be a Pole, you could be a German, you could be... A Canadian, you do the same job, for example, you know, plumbing or something like that. So I think we should dissociate ourselves with necessarily ghettos and understand that it has to do with the people not having access to education. Because if you give your children education, you are going to succeed and your kids are going to integrate better and, and all that. Anyway, I think I've talked a lot. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, thank you very much. Nice to meet you. And um, good luck in the future, yeah? Thanks. Thanks.